Welcome back to the shop, guys. You've got yourself a supercharger for your C5 or you're thinking about getting one, but what kind of fuel are you gonna need to run? Is 90 octane or 91 good enough? Or do you need 85? What about meth injection? Wait, there's water meth injection too. And some people even use windshield wiper fluid injection. I'm not kidding. There's so many choices, so we're gonna talk about all of those and a whole lot more Next. Toys for life. Fuel. It has to be the most misunderstood thing in the automotive industry. I can only imagine how many people have put 91 premium into their tank, convinced that it would run better, when in fact it only really needed 87 octane. The products that I listed in the intro, 90 octane, 91 octane, E85, methanol, methanol water injection, all have a variety of characteristics, but there are only two main characteristics that your supercharged C5 is laser focused on. The first one is octane rating, which is your fuel's ability to tolerate heat, compression, and boost before it succumbs to knock, ping, or detonation. The second characteristic is the fuel's ability to cool the incoming intake charge and the combustion chamber temperatures, which also lessens the risk of knock. Cooling that incoming air is so important that we even add intercoolers to our supercharger setups. Interestingly enough, the fuel itself does not make the extra power that we're after. What it does do is hopefully allow our engine to be tuned to allow our ignition timing to occur at precisely the correct moment under wide open throttle that allows our engine to make as much power as it's able to. If the fuel we are using has insufficient octane or ability to cool the incoming intake charge, then knock, ping, and detonation will prevent us from using that precise ignition timing at wide open throttle that the engine really wants to make ideal power, and as a result, we'll be forced to retard the timing, resulting in less power. I just mentioned a few things that are super important. Knock, ping, and detonation, which for our purposes are basically the same thing. Going forward, I'll just simply refer to it as knock. I also mentioned optimal ignition timing at wide open throttle. Now let's zoom in on each of these things because they're often confused and there's a lot of misunderstandings out there. And even if you don't plan to tune your own C5 Corvette, it's important that you have a good working understanding of these concepts. First, let's talk about knock, and I want to start out by talking about what knock is not. Knock is not engine run on. Engine run on is caused when you shut off an engine that's carbureted typically, that's been running a while, and there's something in the combustion chamber that's red hot, like the tip of the spark plug or some carbon. Anyway, you shut it off and fuel still gets inside there. It hits a compression stroke and there's something red hot and it continues to run. That is run on. Do not confuse it with knock. Exactly what happens when an engine experiences knock is fairly complicated. It typically happens under high load situations, high heat, uh, maybe the timing is a little bit too high or the octane of the fuel is too low. And when the spark plug fires, instead of getting a normal controlled explosion, Imagine that this is the explosion slowed down about 500 times. Nice and smooth and predictable from where the spark plug ignites. Instead of that happening, the spark plug ignites and for some reason, instead of the smooth explosion, you get kind of little pockets of sub-explosions going on. These create pressure spikes in the cylinder and can break piston ring lands or even break the piston. Now if you want to pause your screen for a moment, here is the textbook definition of knock. Let's move on to what is meant by wide open throttle, optimal ignition timing. Optimal ignition timing on any engine under wide open throttle in any load is the point at which in degrees before top dead center of the compression stroke, the engine makes the maximum amount of torque without experiencing any knock. This point is referred to by professional level OEM tuners as maximum brake torque, or MBT for short. In a normal passenger car like this Grand Prix, it has a 3.8 liter naturally aspirated engine, about nine and a half to one compression, and a mild camshaft. Now it's able to, to achieve maximum brake torque at wide open throttle, pretty much at any load, 
on even 87 octane without experiencing any knock. Even if we were to bump the fuel up to 91 octane or even 93 octane without any modifications to the engine or the timing, we would achieve zero additional torque or horsepower. Now when we take the C5 Corvette with its LS1 engine, that typically runs quite well on 90 octane fuel and probably with the factory tune is coming really close to maximum brake torque. But when we add a supercharger to it, we're greatly increasing the cylinder pressures and probably even the heat a little bit, even with the intercooler that we're installing. If we run 90 octane fuel at wide open throttle under heavy load, if we were to try to achieve maximum brake torque with the ignition timing advance, we're likely going to hit knock and have to retard it. And that, of course, is going to cost us a little extra horsepower. Although this is less than ideal, it'll still be reliable and the Corvette will still make close to 200 more horsepower than stock. Just understand that we're going to be leaving a little bit of horsepower on the table than if we bumped up the fuel to say 91 octane, 93 octane, or maybe a little spray of meth in order to achieve additional timing to get to maximum brake torque. Alternatively, if you're happy with the horsepower your supercharged C5 is making on 90 octane and you want to leave it at that level so that you can continue to use the fuel that's most readily available in your area, you could talk to your tuner and see if it makes sense to use a larger pulley on your supercharger which will drop the boost down a little bit and the lower boost level might allow you to get to maximum brake torque timing with 90 octane fuel. Now that you're familiar with knock and optimal ignition timing at wide open throttle to achieve maximum brake torque and how your fuel's cooling and octane rating affect each, let's dig a little bit deeper to see how you go about figuring out what type of fuel and or injection product to run in your C5. Most supercharger kits come with a somewhat limited range of adjustability in the boost pressures. This is accomplished by changing out the pulley size on your head unit. So in my case with the Vortec V3, pulley sizes range from on the large size of 4 inches, which provides the lowest amount of boost, and on the smaller size pulley it's 3.4 inches, which provides the most boost, and everything in between those two numbers in 0.2 inch increments. Each 0.2 inch pulley change equals somewhere around 1.5 pounds of boost difference, depending on your application. In my particular situation, living here in Minnesota, 91 octane is available year round. My LS engine is a stock cam and exhaust setup. And after a lot of thought beforehand, I decided I wanted to have a little over 600 horsepower at the crank. With these factors in mind, I spoke to Josh at A&A and I decided to go with the Vortec V3 SI head unit with a 3.6 inch pulley. I chose this setup because it should give me the 600 horsepower I'm looking for reliably and efficiently on 91 octane while leaving me a little bit of headroom just in case I want a little bit more horsepower down the road. On a side note, it would be incredibly beneficial if you can find your Josh. Now that person is somebody knowledgeable from the company that you source your parts from, or perhaps it's a local reputable tuner who's knowledgeable in boosted LS applications because that person can help you find the right combination of parts the first time to meet your horsepower goals. Once you have your supercharger kit fully installed and start the tuning process, it's time to find out just how well your part selection is going to work with the fuel you intended to use. Let's talk about my setup as a case study. My C5 is on the street 99% of the time, but a few times out of the year, I like to go to the drag strip. And coincidentally, the drag strip is where I like to dial in my wide open throttle tuning. In my opinion, the quarter mile track is an excellent place to dial in your tuning because the mile per hour that you achieve is an excellent indicator as to how much horsepower your LS1 is making. And unless you're there on a gusty day, any changes you make to your tune will absolutely show up in the mile per hour of your next pass. And just so you know, your elapsed time that you're achieving means pretty much nothing as far as how much horsepower your LS is putting out. So what I try to do is just use a conservative and repeatable launch that's easy on parts so that I can rely on the mile per hour to guide me in my tuning. 
What I found my first time out at the track with the C5 to do some wide open throttle tuning was that I was only able to achieve about 12 and a half degrees of ignition timing before the second half of the track I would run into some knock deep into third gear and fourth gear which was unacceptable for the conservative tune that I was looking for and also at 120 miles an hour it fell well short of the 125 mile per hour goal that I had in mind. Now to be fair my LS1 has 70,000 miles on it so it's entirely possible my pistons have carbon buildup on them which effectively raise the compression ratio and make the engine less tolerant before knock sets in. Whatever the cause, I wanted more mile per hour and so I had some decisions to make. So what would be the best way for me to bump up my fuel's octane rating or cool my combustion chamber better, or better yet, both? Some of the options that I took into consideration were using an octane booster like Torco or Boostane, adding a methanol injection kit, but that can get kind of expensive. At the end of the day, for three very good reasons, I've decided to put E85 to work to solve my problem, but I'm gonna do it in a little bit different way, which we'll get to in a moment. But first, let me walk through the three excellent qualities of E85 that made it a no-brainer for my problem. Number one, it's cheap and readily available. Number two, it's got higher octane than gasoline. In fact, E85 is around 105 octane. And number three, Ethanol has a substantially higher latent heat of vaporization and what that means in simple terms It cools the combustion chamber Significantly better than gasoline the first problem to address when thinking about E85 though Is that it takes roughly 30% more E85 as compared to gasoline to run the LS1 engine now That's doable, but that would require the extra cost of a greater capacity fuel pump and it also might not be as reliable as the stock C5 fuel pump that I have now that gets an assist from the Kenny Bell Booster Pump. So after a little further thought, I decided to go with E33 fuel by blending E85 along with 89 octane gasoline. That ends up giving me about 95 and a half octane gasoline and it has a much better cooling effect than gasoline alone. After some careful testing, I determined that I do have enough fuel pump to run E33 all the way up to 6,500 RPM at wide open throttle. So next it was time for a trip back to the track to see how it performs. After another test and tune day at my local track, take a look at this, 1148 at 130 miles an hour on my custom E33 blend. I was able to achieve a full 16 and a half degrees timing through all four gears with absolutely no signs of knock. That's an additional four degrees over what I was able to achieve with 91 octane. I'm not sure if I've hit maximum brake torque yet because I've ran out of time. And what's needed is another day back at the track to continue creeping up the timing until either the mile per hour starts to drop or until I hit knock. So as you can probably tell, I am a huge supporter of E85. So if your setup is in need of a better fuel and E85 is available in your area, I highly recommend you work with your tuner to experiment with different ethanol blend fuels to see if that can get you closer to maximum brake torque. If E85 is not available in your area, I would probably research further things like Boostane and Torco to see if those will get you there. Alternatively, you could also look into a methanol water injection setup. For that, I would probably do additional research and then talk to the guys at ANA or ECS to see which kit would be appropriate for the power levels and the fuel that you're using. Guys, thanks for sticking around to the end of this one. It was a long one. Hopefully you learned something, and if you did, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.